Good morning. So we're going to be looking today at how we solve equations and specifically we're looking at how we solve two step equations that involve division. Um, and this is going to be a really important prerequisite lesson to what we're doing um, in the following week. So when we're looking at capture and recapture and we look at stratified sampling. So let's get started. Um, the first type of question we're going to do is a question where we've got a fraction and our unknown is on the new rotor. So our unknown is on the top. Um, so in this first question, we're going to be looking at the same methods each time. You're going to be looking at your kill kill method. OK, and when we're doing our kill kill method, we are starting off by moving. And then we are unsticking anything that needs to get unstuck so we start by moving and then we unstick so firstly if i look at this first question i've got x divided by four equals eight so that four is being stuck to the x using a division so to kill that i'm going to multiply both sides by four so i write times by four times by four look how i've drawn the line underneath the equal sign so i write it on both sides and then that allows you to kill that with that so we get our answer of x on this side and this side, I have to do the 8 times the 4, so 32. There's my first answer, OK? One more. And look at the example below. So I want to solve this one, so I'm going to draw a line here. So I want to get A on its own. And at the moment, I've got a 2 and a 3. Both are stuck to the A. So because both are stuck to the A, it actually doesn't matter which one you get rid of first. You can get rid of the 2 or you can get rid of the 3. They're both stuck stuck to the A. So let's get rid of the 3. To get rid of the 3, well, the 3 is on the denominator. The 3 is dividing the 2A. So to kill the 3, you're going to times both sides by 3. So that kills that. And we are left with a 2A equals 8 times 3, 24. Okay, now I've got 2A equals 24. So I do the method again. Let's get a bit more space in the screen. Method again, I draw my line underneath the equal sign. Line underneath the equal sign. I'm going to kill the two, so this time I'm going to divide by two. So I write divide by two and divide by two. Up to you, you could have written this if you wanted divide by two and divide by two. I did it at the fraction. But that allows you to kill that two with that two, um, and you then get a equals 24 divided by two, 12. There's your answer. Okay, so just spend um, 20 seconds. You having a go at this first question, you try. I will pause the video or pause the video now so you can have a go at it and press play when you're ready to go through the answer. OK, welcome back. So remember, when you're getting y on its own, we draw a line here, at the equal sign, oops, line here at the equal sign. You want to get y on its own. The only thing that's stopping the y from being on its own is this divide by five. It's stuck to the y. So to kill it, I'm going to times both sides by five. That kills that and you're left with y equals 25. So I hope you got that answer of 25. Uh, OK, some questions for you to have a go at then. So again, you've got a lovely set of questions here to answer. Pause your video um, and come back when you're ready to look at the answers. OK, welcome back. Let's quickly go through the answers then. So for A, we should have got the answer. I'll write them as we go. X equals 12. For B, W equals 3. For C, A equals 40. For D, W equals 56. For E, X equals 230. For F, uh, sorry, for F, C equals 45. For G, T equals 15 times 14. So 15 times 14 is 210. For H, Y is equal to 3 times 1.5, which is 4.5. Uh, for i, x is equal to 4 times 1.6, which is 6.4. For j, x is equal to 8 times 2.5, which is 20. For k, x is equal to minus 12. And for, e, uh, for l, x is equal to 6 times minus 12, minus 72. So you can see that final answer there you go, minus 72. OK, right, let's move on to one step harder. Then. So um, these questions involve two unstickings. You have to unstick the divide and unstick the multiply. So press play when you're ready to go through these answers. 
Okay, so here are the answers on your screen. So here are the answers to check. Again, you're doing two unsticking there. So if I just quickly go through H, you had 5x over 14 equals 3. So I put my equal and my line here underneath the equal sign. And we should have first times everything by 14. So times by 14, how's that 14? That kills this. So I get 5x equals 3 times 14. So 3 times 14 is 42. And then to finish the question off, you're going to divide both sides by 5. That kills that. So that's how we get our answer. X equals 42 over 5. And I can't simplify that down anymore because there are no factors of 42 and 5. The only factors of 5 are 1 and 5. That doesn't go into 42. So there's my final answer. OK, so next stage is when we're solving problems where you've got to move something before you unstick. So if we look at the first example here, you've got X over 4 plus 1 equals 9. So now you have to move that plus one before you can do anything. So I'm going to minus one and minus one for both sides. This kills this guy. So you're left with on this side, x over four equals eight. And now we're back to what we were just solving, where you need to now unstick the four. So we times both sides by four. And we get that killing that. So x equals 32. And there's your answer. OK, one more. Let's do K. Uh, let's do G. So I've got K over four plus five equals minus six. So draw the line here. Don't skip this step. Think about how do you move that plus five? You're going to move the plus five by minusing plus five on both sides. That kills that. So you're left with K over four equals minus six minus another five. So you're at the number line at minus six and you're going down one two, three, four, five. You're going down another five. So minus seven, minus eight, minus nine, minus 10, minus 11. Okay. And then to finish the question off, line here, you're going to times by four on both sides, times by four on both sides, and we get k equals, so that kills that, k equals minus 44. So there's your answer for that one. Okay, so pause your video now and have a go at these questions. Press pray when you want to go back to the answers. So pause now. Okay, welcome back. So here are your answers. So for question A, you've got x equals 32. That's the example we gave. For B, x equals 28. For C, w equals 5. For D, x equals 72. For E, m equals 12. For F, x equals minus 30. For G, k equals minus 44. And for H, x equals minus 36. Okay, so um, final examples is when you have more things going on in the question. It looks harder, but actually your method says exactly the same. So let's remember you're going to first start with kill, kill. And you're going to move anything you need to move. And you're going to unstick anything you need to unstick in that order. OK, now the reason why these ones look a bit tricky is because when we look at this first example, we might think that we're going to move that minus one first. So we might think that this guy needs to get moved first. But actually, you can't move that minus one because that minus one is being stuck by that seven. So we can't move that minus one because actually that minus one represents a seventh, not a one or a minus a seventh, not a minus one. So in order to rearrange just correctly, you first need to unstick the seven from the whole thing and then you can go back to moving. So here, your first step would need to be times by... Oh, Get rid of that. Your first step would need to be times by seven, times by seven, because that kills that. And here you're left with 10x minus one equals eight times seven, which is 56. Okay, now we're back to our moving, because now I can move that one. So I draw the line here, and I'm going to add one, add one to both sides, that kills that. And I've got 10x equals. 57 and then final step kill off that 10 by unsticking it so draw the line here and you're going to be dividing by 10 dividing by 10 the final answer x equals 5.7 okay so there you had to do some unsticking before you could move so you have a go at this one think about what's that first step got to be um, and press play when you're ready to go through the answer
Okay, welcome back. So let's have a look at how we would solve this problem. It's the same again. We cannot move that plus three. You cannot move that plus three because the divide by four is applying to the whole expression on that side. It's applying to the W and the plus three. So in actual fact, the quickest way of doing this is to times both sides by four, kill that divide by four, so you're left with W plus three equals, on this side, you've got an eight. Okay, now line again, you can do some moving. I can minus three from both sides and I should get W equals five. And there's your final answer. So hopefully you got that right. Now let's have a get some questions all together. So you've got this set of questions to do. Press pause now, have a go at them and press play when you want to go through the answers. Okay, welcome back. We're going to go through the answers now. Okay, so here are the answers on the screen. Check that you're happy with those. Brilliant. Right, so our final thing we need to be able to do then is solve problems when there is an unknown on our denominator. So we're now looking at how do we solve problems like this? So 3 over x equals 1. OK, so how would we solve a problem where our unknown is on the denominator? So before we can do kill, kill, as soon as you see a question where X on the denominator, your only job is to get rid of X from the denominator. OK, so that's got to be your first priority, because if it's on the denominator, it means it's doing something. It means it's dividing by x. And we can't rearrange when the x is actually doing something. So I need to get rid of x from the denominator. So the way I do that is I turn both sides into fractions. And then I cross multiply like this. So I'm going to show you how that works here. So I'm going to turn one into a fraction. Well, I can turn any whole number into a fraction by making it over one. So that means I've got 3 over x equals 1 over 1, and I can cross multiply. So this goes up here, and that goes up there. And I get on this side, 3 times 1 equals on this side, x times 1. OK, so 3 equals 1x. So in fact, that just gives me the answer straight away, x equals 3. And I've solved it. OK, let me just show you one more. We're getting rid of it off the denominator. Let's have 21 over x equals 7. So if I want to find what x is, I turn 7 into a fraction by making it over 1, and then I cross multiply. So this 1 goes up here, and this x goes up here. So this becomes 21 times 1 equals 7 times x, because that, that um, look at the journey, that 1 has gone up there with the 21, and that x has gone up there with the 7. So if I tidy that up a bit, I would have 21 equals 7x. And now I'm going right back to my kill kill method. Okay, and in kill kill, you've got to move anything and then you've got to unstick anything. So if I'm moving, there's nothing to move here, but I do need to unstick that 7. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7. That kills that, and I'm left with 21 over 7, which is 3 equals x. And there's my answer, OK? So again, I've got x equals 3. So here's one now for you to have a go at. So I'm going to put the question on the screen, and you can pause. Press play when you want to go through the answers. So you try. You've got, um, let's have. 24 over x equals 6. OK, press pause now and have a go at that question. OK, welcome back. Let's have a look at these questions then. So you've got 24 over x equals 6. So we turn 6 into a fraction and write 6 over 1. We cross multiply here and here. So this becomes 24 times 1 equals 6 times x. So 24 equals 6x. You're now ready to solve the problem, so I'm going to kill off that 6 by dividing by 6, dividing by 6, kill, kill, and we should have a final answer here of x equals 4. Okay, now we're going to be practicing this method uh, many times tomorrow when we do capture and recapture. Um, just be aware that they can make the question look harder by giving you something like this. So let's have um, uh, 12 over x equals 
4 over 3. So it looks like a harder problem because the numbers are more complicated, you've got more fractions involved. But actually, this question is much simpler because they've already given you a fraction on this side. So you've already got it in fraction form here. So you can go straight to cross multiplying up here and cross multiplying up here. So I would get 12 times 3 equals 4 times x. So 12 times 3 is 36 equals 4x. And then you can do your kill kill method. So divide by 4, divide by 4 to kill that 4. And you've got 9 equals x as your answer. OK, so just finish off today's lesson for me. Have a go at one more question. The question I'm going to give you is 15 over x equals uh, 10 over 3. So have a go at that question. Press pause now. OK, welcome back. Let's quickly go through this last question then. So you're going to cross multiply. It's already in fraction form. So I cross multiply and you should get 15 times 3 equals 10 times x. So that's going to give you 45 equals 10x. Now you're ready to do kill kill. So I'm going to unstick the 10, divide both sides by 10. And you've got 4.5 equals x. And that's your final answer. So well done if you got that today. Great work. Remember the two clips and Hegarty that you can go and practice now, 180 and 181. Well done, everyone.